Okay, so imagine this. You're an extroverted intuitive type and you win the lottery. Great! Yes, I won the lottery. Wait, what? I'm an extroverted intuitive? Not great. Because as an extroverted intuitive, I can't really enjoy anything. Yeah, one of the issues that is often brought up by extroverted intuitives is extroverted intuitives, they're always searching for something. They're always thinking about what's next. Next, What could I do now? What could I try after this? Who could I meet? Where could I go? What could I buy? What could I... Extroverted intuitives touch upon what things could be. It's not about the here and now. It's not about what you have. It's about what you could get. It's about what could be. So the grass is always greener on the other side. There is always something new. There is always something different. The extroverted intuitive can be caught in a bad pattern in which they cycle through experiences without never really enjoying ev anything. Yeah, a lot of extroverted intuitives, they fail to acquire happiness because they don't know how to enjoy something. How do you enjoy something? Is it just about letting yourself be happy? Is it just about being appreciative of what you have? Is it just about accepting and finding satisfaction with the things you have? Is it about giving up that need for more? Is it about letting go of that desire for something else? Is it about just finding peace with what is? Is it about just letting yourself be in the moment? Is it about just being able to be present? What is it truly to enjoy something? How can I truly enjoy something as an extroverted intuitive? Okay, so the problem here is there is a built-in association in society that there is a certain way to enjoy things. There is a certain way to do things and like things and appreciate things. And the extroverted intuitive way is wrong. It's not right. You have to do it differently. So often there is a deeper rejection that the extroverted intuitive will throw against themselves, constantly telling themselves they cannot get too enthusiastic about something. Often extroverted intuitives feel they cannot let themselves get too excited about a possibility or an idea. You should not be excited about something. You should enjoy what you have. Why are you getting excited all of a sudden about the next concert? You're at the concert right now. What's so much greater about the next concert you're going to? Why are you so excited about your next future promotion? Why can't you just be happy about the one you just had? Why are you not appreciating what you have right now? That's the constant brainwashing. That's the constant idea that extrovert intuitives are constantly wrestling with. There is an idea about how you should enjoy things and it's keeping you from actually enjoying anything. So the extrovert intuitive has to grow into and find a way to manage their nature as explorer types. The extrovert intuitives, they love to search for novelty. Novelty is at the heart of their type. Just being able to learn new things, to be able to dig into or study something, to be able to find a new pattern and to just test it out, to be able to experiment with something, to be able to go to a new place, to be able to travel, to have freedom, to be able to feel free, to be able to say what you want, to express what's on your mind, to share your wildest ideas with other people, without other people coming down on you. And yeah, as an extroverted intuitive, you probably heard it a lot of times. That's stupid. No, that's crazy. Oh, no. How can you think that? That's never going to happen. That's impossible. Why can't you just be happy with what you have? Once again, it all comes back to the same thing over and over. Other people will have built-in associations about your ideas and your projects. And it's not just other personality types, but it's other extroverted intuitives too. Often extroverted intuitives will internalize this worldview and they will look at other extroverted intuitives with the same shaded glasses, looking at them with critical eyes, thinking, yeah, that's a great idea, but it's never going to work. Yeah, that would be really fun, but you should probably just be happy with what you have. And that's why a lot of characters that are extroverted intuitives in books have to go through a moment of liberation. You know, a lot of books, a lot of great books about extroverted intuitives start with a phase of liberation. You come to life and you have a certain lifestyle and you do a certain thing every day. You go to school, you have your friends, you have the things you do and the things you wear and everything is 
pretty much set for you. But you're an extroverted intuitive and you feel a deeper frustration with all these things. You don't like stagnation. You don't like just being anybody like everybody else. You don't like just being one of the people in society, just uh, doing the normal thing like everyone else, just having a normal lifestyle, just being at work eight hours a day, you know, uh, working in the same job as most people else are doing, you know, just having a normal average life. That's not enough for you. That's not what you want. So you go through a phase that is liberation, which is at some point, you, for some extent, for a little while, you try to make your peace with this and to feel happy with this. But it doesn't work. And the, the possibilities are starting to amp up. There's a steady amount of new possibilities. There's that new guy you met. That's that new job you got. That new offer you got. That new audition that you were thinking to go to. And uh, yeah, people have told you you will never succeed as an actor or a musician. You know, you don't have what it takes. You don't look good enough. You know, you've been told all those things, you know. Uh, so you're at first you just shoot it down. But the idea is there and it's staring at you and you're starting to make connections. You know, extract intuitives, they're great at making connections. And they start seeing lines add up. You know, everything seems to be going towards this addition everything seems to be leading towards connecting towards this guy or this job opportunity or this possibility it's you can't stop thinking about it because you're encountered with it every day everything you see everything you do makes you think of this new thing and that's the great thing about the intuitive mind you're making connections all the time you're seeing patterns you're connecting the dots and the connections there they might appear purely random, but they're rooted in your unconscious and it's rooted in what you really want and what it is that you dream of the very, very most. Intuition is a partially unconscious process, so it lives in part in shadow land. You know, you, know, you look at the world, but parts of it is hidden to you. you know? There is the world you can see, it's the people you know, it's the friends you have, it's the family, it's the school, it's everything you're doing every day. But then there is the shadow land behind everything, you know, and that's the intuitive potential. That's the land of dreams and possibilities. That's every door you haven't opened yet. It's every person you haven't talked to yet. It's every song you haven't heard yet. It's every uh, place you haven't visited yet. So as an extrovert intuitive, you're the most in flow when you're making these connections and when you're thinking about these possibilities. And you know, that's when you're happy. You know, sometimes I think all types have to stop and recognize to themselves, when am I happy? When do I feel happy? And uh, here, what you have to recognize is I'm happy right now while I'm doing this. I'm happy while I'm trying out for this audition, even if it might fail. I'm happy when I'm out talking to new people, even if they might not take get me anywhere, even if it's not going to work out, even if it's not going to be friends or anything. Uh, you're happiest by thinking about the possibilities that lay before you, you know, planning out the vacation, you know, uh, starting to uh, really get going on an idea or a thought or a possibility. So what should you do? Should you reject everything you have? Are you, uh, is it just, should you just leave your past behind you? Should you just give up your old friends and get, lose your old job and quit? And should you just uh, stop uh, with everything you're doing right now? Is the past unimportant? Does it not matter? Of course it matters. But what I want to say is, if you don't act on your ideas and on the potential you see, you will gradually become increasingly resentful of the good things that you do have. You can chase new ideas and new possibilities while at the same time loving the things you've already done, while appreciating the things you already have. You can go out and try something new while still knowing and being completely sure of the things that you have and being completely appreciative of the things you've already done and everything you've done so far. 
you can think about and plan your next apartment while feeling happy with the one you just got, while feeling good that you got it, while feeling positive and at peace with the things that are right now. So what it all boils down to is don't worry so much. It's all gonna make sense. It's all gonna connect. It's all gonna add up. It might seem like you're abandoning your old projects. It might seem like you're giving up what you have. It might seem like you're not appreciative enough of what it is. But you will build connections. You will be able to fit your old lifestyle with your new lifestyle. And the things you're doing right now will connect back to the things that you've done in the past. The things you've learned in the past will become useful again in what you do now. The things and experiences you've had that didn't lead anywhere will serve you in whatever it is you're doing right now. And what you have to recognize here is you're an archetype of learning and of constant learning and constant new information and constant new possibilities. And you're never going to stop being that. It's never going to change. It's never going to lead up to becoming a traditionalist who always wears the same pants, who always uh, drinks the same drink, you know, always orders the same food at the pub, you know. You're never going to be that person. It's not about finding the right thing. It's not about finding the right routine. It's not about doing the thing that will hold on forever. It's about truly being able to appreciate novelty and variation and change. So that's it for Extorted Intuitives. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like, share and subscribe and share it with other people who might need this message. Write in the comments down below if you have any thoughts on this and what your experiences are with novelty seeking and with happiness and with envy and with the thought of whether the grass really is greener on the other side.